who is sharing the slides already and his colleagues from the University of Aachen, um, Christoph Mattea, Thomas Noll and Johannes Schulte. And the paper is about automated checking and completion of backward confluence for hyperedge replacement grammars. It is a tool presentation paper and we are looking forward very much to your presentation. Please go ahead. Yeah. Thank you. So, uh, hello everyone. Um, yeah, I would, I would like to tell you about the tool we uh, develop at our chair. Um, and it has mainly two features. On the one hand, um, it can check a variant uh, of confluence, which is backwards confluence, uh, for a subset of uh, transformation systems, the hybrid replacement grammars. And uh, the next feature is then, if the grammar is not backwards confluent, to try to find a similar grammar that is confluent, which we call here completion. So maybe um, uh, a disclaimer at the, at, at the front, I'm not an expert at graph transformations. Um, we were mainly application driven, but I think uh, this tool is applicable to, to other applications as well. And I hope we will have fun uh, regardless in the next uh, minutes. So since this, um, this tool is application driven, let's also present the application as a motivation. And uh, what we try is to use, to, uh, use graphs to model um, memory. So here, for example, we have a graph representing a double linked list. Um, what we don't see in this uh, in this illustration of the graph is that the nodes are also attributed with the class types of an object. So now we try to um, abstract the memory and we use hyperedge replacement grammars. And these hyperedge replacement grammars have the nice property that we get a, a forward application which results in concretization we have a backwards application, which results in um, abstraction. And in this sense, um, we get, uh, get non-terminals, which represent some sort of um, data structure. And in this case, we have here on the left, a data structure that represents, uh, or is a naive model to, tr to, to represent a double linked list. And we'll see that this may uh, lead to, to problems. And in this talk, we mainly are interested in the abstraction set, which is a backwards application of this rule. And if we see this, um, this memory model, uh, we can now try to, to apply the rules backwards. We first um, apply the first rule on the lower part, then the second rule on the two lower edges. And in the last step, we, we uh, apply the second rule again, and that can then get something like this. However, we could also have used a different order of applications. Maybe, maybe we only use the first rule and then we got something like this. And uh, here, the second part, uh, we cannot well, abstract backwards derive anymore, but somehow we would like to get a normal form. Well, why is a normal form here, here interesting? We would like to have a unique abstraction because then, um, this, this uniqueness, the confluence, uh, would yield a well-behaving illustration. It's already well-researched. You can find a couple of um, publications about this and we, that we get if the hyperedge replacement grammar is backwards confluence, we get an abstraction. And this mainly also yields in an efficiency boost because we don't have to um, explore all possible abstractions, all possible backwards applications, but just have to pick any of them. So in this, um, in this examples, we would like to have some rule like um, derivation from this single non-terminal to two of these uh, non-terminals, and that we can derive from this, let's say, uh, ill-behaving uh, graph to this normal form. So our goal here is, firstly, we want to have a tool that can check such an hyperedge replacement grammar for confluence and hopefully be fast at it. 
And then the next step, we need to somehow um, deal with grammars that are not confluent. And here the idea is we try to find a confluent hyper edge replacement grammar that still in some sense can uh, represent these data structures we want to um, we want to uh, represent. Now let's come to um, to what backwards confluent is. You may already know if you are familiar with confluence this uh, illustration about um, critical pairs. You may also notice that now all the arrows are reversed. That is the case because we're interested in backwards confluence. So the backwards application of this derivation. Here we have a context graph at the top. And we apply two, two rules to get G1 and G2, apply afterwards as many uh, abstractions, backwards derivations as possible to get this G1 star and G2 star. And then we asked uh, whether they are in some sense equal. There are different uh, definitions of um, equalness. And the first one is joinable or what we will call weakly joinable. And then we just require an isomorphism between those, those two uh, graphs. However, for our um, application that is not strong enough, we instead need strongly joinable, but we also require a strictness, not just an isomorphism, but a, a real strictness of the unchanged And we didn't invent this. This is all due to already published research, uh, mainly Plum et al. from 2018, where we can check uh, backwards confluence by means of the critical pairs and check whether they are strongly joinable. We are also not the first tool to uh, deal with critical pairs and confluence. There are a couple of other tools that also can compute um, critical pairs. Uh, and also at least one of them can uh, check local confluence. However, we were interested in global confluence. And we also tried some of these tools. Of course, most of them, or I think even all of them are more expressive than, uh, than our, or have a wider range of, of uh, transformation systems. And at least for AGG, we tried to use that. However, um, either because our um, our encoding of the of the grammars were poorly, or because AGG can uh, do a more range of grammars, uh, our the runtime wasn't feasible enough for us. So the, the, the examples we had took a couple of hours, but um, that wasn't fast enough for us. That's probably because again, first um, our encoding may be too too bad. And second, AGG is much more powerful in the expressiveness. Then uh, let's come to the first evaluation. So um, here we see evaluation results uh, for the conflict checking feature. And uh, you also see here the simple DLS as the example we saw uh, at the beginning of our presentation. We had uh, in total three of these critical pairs or symbolic representations of critical pairs, we needed to check two of them were indeed strongly joinable, zero of them were uh, not strongly joinable, but weak joinable, and only one was not joinable. And if we will, we will later take a closer look at this one uh, non -joiner, not joinable critical pair, we will see that's exactly the, the one we saw, that's exactly a presentation of the one we saw at the start. We also see here the runtime. The runtime is quite good. So all of the runtimes are milliseconds. So for, for checking the simple DLL data structure grammar, uh, that was nearly instant. However, we also can see even for, uh, for ones that have more critical pairs, for example, this uh, more sophisticated modulation of double linked list uh, also took just around 200 milliseconds, which is compared to um, other processes we have to do in, in, uh, in the checking, for example, parsing the grammar and also the virtual machine, which we didn't include in this runtime, um, is, is, uh, is, is just uh, do dominate the runtime. So both of these take around half a second 
and none of these reach half a second of runtime. And we also see here, we have splitted the runtime in uh, multiple parts. We see, for example, that uh, the runtime um, took for well, checking uh, or computing node related things, took more time here in the DLL list um, example, uh, relatively more. And here in the simple DLL list, it kind of took more for the edge cases, uh, for the edge. Um, computations and um, similarly valid validity which is kind of all the other things uh, which have to be checked uh, also was more uh, prominent in the DLLs case. So now uh, ad 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 additionally what also was quite interesting this uh, DLL list uh, example was an example that we already use frequently um, that was kind of a, a, running ex a running example or running grammar we used for verification processes. And um, we always just assumed it would be confluent because it behaved in our applications confluent. However, only through this project, um, we discovered that this grammar is indeed not confluent. So uh, in the next step uh, was, well, what are we going to do if the grammar is not confluent? You see quite a couple of these grammars which really are in use by us are not confluent and thus it's a well, a not well behaving abstraction. So the next question was, um, can we maybe find a different grammar that is confluent and maybe behave similar to this one? And then we come to the completion part. I always said we want to have a similar one. So we don't want to just have any that is maybe over um, over approximating, but we want uh, one that is closely related to that one. So for this reason, we opted to use heuristics and I have structured this heuristic in two uh, cases. First one are the, the basic heuristics, that are kind of the building blocks to build algorithms um, or heuristic algorithms. And the second will be combinations of these. So first look at the first heuristic. Um, this one is about uh, completion abstraction. So here we use uh, side conditions to block undesired abstraction. Um, this is, I guess, related to a different approach also by Plum et al. Um, regarding, it's called confluence up to garbage. I believe it's, it's related to this, um, where we say something is confluence up to some derivations we are not interested in. And this kind of reminded me um, of, of this notion where here we also um, consider some uh, configurations just as garbage and try to block these in order to reach confluence. A different approach that is um, similar to what you would do in uh, string transformation systems is by just adding a new rule, uh, a new non terminal and rules to a critical pair. So we just introduce a new non terminal and two rules to both of these critical pair graphs in order to resolve the, the conflict that the critical pair yields. Uh, the next approach is, is kind of an extension to this. So if we have two of these critical pairs where we introduce new non terminals and these new non terminals now again uh, give us a notch, not uh, joinable critical pair, then we can just merge these both non-terminals in order to have just one non-terminal and derive derivations to um, four graphs. The last of these uh, building blocks is also related to this. In this case, we this is kind of a special case of the at rule non new at rule new non-terminal heuristic where if we have uh, a critical pair where one graph is only a non-terminal, we can just add a derivation from the non-terminal edge to the other graph. And then uh, we try to combine them in a couple of uh, different heuristics. And in the first one, uh, we just tried to use these rule adding ones, so the last three, and, and see how this performed. And there are, and the other two um, try to use all of the four basing blocks in different orders, especially where we're interested 
interested in to see whether the the order actually really matters. So let's go to the evaluation of this. Um, so here we see. Uh, let's maybe again look at these two. To this example, we already saw simple DLL. So here, uh, the run times now are in seconds instead of milliseconds. And we see here, well, at least for simple DLL, the runtime is still fine. And we also see that one of the um, basic heuristics, this um, single uh, non terminal heuristic, uh, yields us a confluent uh, grammar. We'll later see that it's actually behaving as we want to behave it. Um, however, we also see that uh, a question arised whether the, 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 um, the order of these uh, heuristics matter, matter, and indeed we see here A1 and A2 for some examples have quite different um, uh, runtimes by yielding either the same result as for link tree one, link tree two, simple DLL and DLL list, and sometimes even better results for the A2 case as here in entry. And on top of this, uh, most of the time, the runtime of this A2, in our examples at least, is uh, quite better. You also see here that uh, some of these are maybe unknown to you. This is just an, a known, uh, an already explained heuristic added with the side conditions where we tried to uh, maintain a certain um, a certain property that is important for for our, uh, for our abstraction processes. But I won't go into the detail about this property here. Um, you may also see a, a kind of a problem now because I already said we wanted to have fast run times. And at least if you look at this linked tree to for most of these algorithms, and in, indeed, at least if you want to have the property uh, L, um, the runtime doesn't seem to be feasible anymore. We, we get here um, a couple of hours we would uh, need to complement the grammars. And thus, maybe two possibilities arise to tackle this. The first one would be to, to add just a timeout to say, okay, we wait maybe a second for in trying to complete it. And if we don't find a, a confluent grammar after a second, we just gave up and try some other techniques uh, like um, using a weaker definition of extraction, which is then less efficient, but at least we can use the grammar. A different approach would be to uh, just use it, just apply the uh, completion once. So, um, Maybe as a pre-processing step, apply the, the, the completion to get a confluent grammar. And instead of using the old grammar, we'll then just use the new completed grammar afterwards. Okay, so in the next part, I would like to demonstrate you uh, the tool. So I skipped to this uh, command line. And at first, let's show me the maybe basic, the most basic um, application of this tool. So here again, I use this simple uh, running example that I already showed you. And here we, we see that indeed our tool can um, say that it is not backwards confluent. However, we don't see much of, um, we don't get, get any graphical um, uh, response from the tool yet. However, we can in include here an, an export feature that now exports uh, some Tesh files. And we can now look at these Tesh files that I already um, compiled for you. And firstly, we see um, now how the grammar looked. You already knew that exactly these were the rules I presented to you at the start of my slide. And we also get a representation of the critical pairs. And I think the second one is uh, the most interesting one because that is the one that is not joinable. And we see here, indeed, that is the one uh, we observed as a problem where we have here two non terminals and we will, and on the other part, on the other side, we have just one non terminals and we would like to 
to, to uh, resolve this conflict somehow. And indeed, we can now also try um, to use our heuristics. We already saw which of the heuristics worked, which I will just use here now. And let's wait for the compilation. And now I also got uh, reports for the critical pairs and the grammar after completion. The critical pairs after completion are now kind of uh, boring because they're empty. But instead, I just show you um, the grammar. And indeed, we get exactly the rule we assumed we would. And this also matches what uh, we were already doing uh, manually. Since we have a quite similar grammar to this, which uh, generates single linked lists instead of DLS, where we manually indeed uh, opted out to use this additional rule in order to, uh, to achieve confluence. All right, let's come back to the slides. And let's also come to the last slide where I will conclude my presentation. So we saw our application is um, trying to get a well-behaving inspection because backward confluence hybrid replacement grammars yield us um, such a well-behaving inspection that is also efficient because we don't need to, to search for all of the abstraction, uh, possible abstract, possible abstraction, possible backwards applications but instead we just uh, need to pick any of them. Uh, we also saw that checking for them is uh, really fast, at least for the examples we uh, commonly use. And so the integration, our verification tool at Testo is uh, quite feasible. Um, we can't say the same for the completion. However, we saw that it's at least capable of generating similar confluent hyper replacement grammars, which yielded the, um, the, the rules we, we assumed would like to have. And um, we also saw some of the examples had quite a slow runtime other where on the other, other, uh, other side fast. And thus, um, we, we got uh, two possibilities to deal with the runtimes. Firstly, we could have uh, used pre-processing in order to deal with the slow runtimes, or we could just use uh, timeout in order to maybe um, exploit the fast runtimes. And uh, with this, I will now come to the end of my, my talk. Um, I thank you for your attention and welcome any questions. Thank you very much, Ira.